There's a few things to understand about uh, the captivity of Mary Rowlandson. One thing that's important to understand is the popularity that this text had when it came out both in America and also overseas in uh, Britain. I think there's three basic main reasons why the text uh, was so popular when it came out. One reason uh, would be because it basically shows a lifestyle that would be very mysterious to uh, most people, the native lifestyle. They wouldn't really understand um, some of the cultural day-to-day -day, uh, basic way of life that the native people would have. So Rowlandson's text does give a little bit, although I would say that it is, uh, it's not very fair. It, it is a bit biased, the way she presents the native lifestyle. Um, she does definitely use charged word choice of, you know, the, the enemy and the savage, she calls them, and also uh, the heathens. So even though it's a little biased by her uh, Christian perspective, looking at them as, as not just um, people who don't believe in her God, but people who would worship Satan, um, we do get a, a kind of a picture of their life uh, that I think the populations both in America and outside of America would find just interesting. Um, I think also that uh, we get a lot of sensationalism in this. Uh, violence is entertaining for many. Um, if you look at today's society, you wouldn't have to think long or look hard to find examples of uh, violence uh, for the sake of spectacle and sport. The beginning of the text is very violent and also I think it's written in a way that the portrayal of the violence, such as when they uh, they set her house on fire and uh, she has the decision to either stay inside and burn alive or go out to where the uh, the natives are, are waiting for them, she writes it in a way I think that she understands that just the sensationalism of it will, will help uh, the text and its appeal. She could have just said, um, you know, uh, the natives shot him uh, and left it at that, but instead just look at the word choice, especially at the beginning in the text, uh, on the attack that happens, um, the the slaughter that's described, it's very vivid in its description. I think people would find that appealing. Um, also, they've got a few things that are sensational as far as the gross out appeal. She talks about what the, uh, it's almost an admiration she has for the natives, how they're able to survive and sustain themselves um, when it looks like there's nothing around to sustain them themselves on. She basically says, a list of what they'll eat and even to our audience today it's kind of a gross list it talks about how you know boiling uh, bones uh, to where the maggots come out of the marrow and you know just kind of uh, uh, fear factor almost like today just the gross out spectacle uh, for entertainment's sake and the last thing uh, reason why I think it was so popular is that the text kind of shows a model of Christian tribulation but also perseverance over that tribulation. Um, the audience, I think, the Christian audience would find that this is uh, reinforcement that God may uh, try his people, but also uh, it ultimately would have a good end. Rowlandson's able to find a, a silver lining in her captivity. She finds that it teaches her a lesson, and that lesson, I think, goes back to patience. Um, several times in the text, she talks about how it's important to wait for God's time. And um, she seems to ultimately think that this experience has made her better uh, rather than the worse. Now, I do think that she goes through several very severe tribulations. The, the, the main one that's most uh, life-changing, I'd say, and maybe most severe would be the death of Sarah, uh, her six-year-old daughter, that it took nine days for her to die. Some of you reading this may have been shocked that uh, Sarah was not a babe. I thought the first time reading this that Sarah had to be a babe uh, just because of the description so often. Rowlandson refers to Sarah as it rather than her. You have to really pay attention. You have to read closely to pick up on first of all her age, six years old. Second of all that it's a, a girl and also her name is just mentioned maybe once or twice. So uh, some students wonder if Rowlandson's use of it is dismissive as far as maybe she didn't care that much for Sarah. I don't think that's the case at all. I think she cared a great deal for Sarah. In fact, Rowlandson implies that she contemplated suicide on Sarah's death and actually is thankful that she did not, that God prevented her from going through with that. But 
I think that Rowlinson's very affected by Sarah's death. I wonder if it's almost like a coping me mechanism, um, referencing Sarah as it is a way for Rowlinson to, I don't know, to, to maybe band-aid the wound a little bit. I do think, though, it is a wound for her. Um, I don't think it's done dismissively, but it's done out of necessity. She also goes through the separation from her, own, uh, her other children. She doesn't really know their fate for quite a long time, and uh, at one point you have to assume that she thought in her mind that all of her children were dead until ultimately she meets up with Mary and also her son and realizes that they are still alive. Um, that's just the, the fact of not knowing uh, would be pretty terrible. Um, even when uh, Sarah is still alive, Sarah is... Uh, shot in the gut. That's a that's a bad wound to have, and it takes a long time to die, and it's very painful. Um, so she has a child dying. She knows in her arms, and also in her mind, she doesn't really know where her other two children are. Uh, think about how how terrible that situation would be, and really not receiving much sympathy uh, from her captors, which that's another uh, tribulation. She's a stranger among these people and a prisoner. Uh, she doesn't really understand these people. Uh, I'm sure she she's frightened. Um, let's talk about the portrait of the nat natives because I think she sees both good and bad uh, experience. She has both good and bad experience with the natives. Some of the bad experiences, which may outweigh the good, is uh, for example when they laugh at her and Sarah when they fall over the horse uh, in their wounded condition. Um, that that's not very nice. Also, we've got where she was kicked out of the wigwam and she wasn't really sure where to go. Um, the master squaw is not nice to her at all. That's the one who slaps her and the one who throws out her, uh, her New Testament. But also we've got a few examples of uh, her being treated nicely by the natives, such as um, when she's kicked out of the wigwam, she ultimately finds uh, a native to bring her in to his wigwam, and they even feed her some of their food. And that's, you know, they have precious little food to share, but they do share it with her. Uh, also, she, of course, gets the Bible, New Testament, which is a godsend for her. It's a little ironic, or maybe not ironic, it's a little dark when you realize that the native who has this New Testament probably took it from the corpse of uh, some of the original owner. Um, also, we have that couple who uh, offer to help her escape. We have the native uh, couple who say, hey, come on, we'll help you escape, and she says, no, I'll wait. So it is kind of an offer that's a nice offer. Um, I'm curious if you think that Sarah's burial, you may discuss this in the discussion board, if Sarah's burial was a kindness or if it was uh, mean of the natives to do. Because they do bury her without telling uh, Rowlinson before they do it. Um, ultimately, I think that Rowlinson realizes something very profound for her. She realizes that these savages she, she thinks of uh, before her captivity, they're actually tools of God. Um, she says that God actually preserves uh, the natives. So this is where she has an understanding that this group of people uh, who were strangers, maybe they're not so different from her, that they are uh, God's people in a way which would be important to her. She would have a connection that God would use these people as an instrument in her own life uh, for his will. Uh, so I think that gives kind of a profound new outlook on the natives that may be spread to some of the other uh, Americans and English.